Today is September the 8th, 2022. My name is Tanya Fincham. I'm with Oklahoma State University with the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program. And I am in Tulsa, Oklahoma to interview Carrie Johnson, a two-time graduate of OSU, bachelor and master of architectural engineering, 1987 and 1988 respectively, and a 2021 seat Hall of Fame inductee. Yes. Yes. And Carrie joined Wallace Design Collection in 1987 mm -hmm. as a structure, structural engineer and is a principal in the firm. Yes. As well as serves as the chair of the board of directors mm -hmm. of the firm. And this is going to be part of our project we're calling STEM Areas and Women. So thank you for letting me come today. But let's begin with learning a little bit about you. Start wherever you like. Okay. So I have lived in Oklahoma all my life. I was born in the opposite corner of the state from from Tulsa. So I was born in a small town of Hobart, Oklahoma, and um, grew up. I mean, I graduated. I graduated high school in 1981 with 81 people. So I can always remember what my graduating class was. But um, I didn't actually know any engineers growing up. Or if I did, like not somebody that I was around a lot because there just aren't engineers usually in a small town. So, um, so yeah, I started my, I guess I got interested in engineering after I got to college. So, okay. so in high school, what was your favorite subject? Um, math, definitely, and art. <laughs> so, what a combination, huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of not the same, right? <laughs> well, Hobart. Hobart? Hobart. Hobart. It's pronounced Hobart, but it's spelled H-O-B-A-R-T like Hobart. Okay. But, and about how big a place is it? Um, now it's about 4,000 people. When I graduated, it was closer to 5,000. It's smaller now. Okay. And did you have brothers and sisters? I have two younger sisters. Okay. So you're in charge. You were the in charge, huh? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> And parents, uh, do for, what did they do for a living? Um, so my dad owned lumber yards, um, mm -hmm. had five different ones for the most of the time whenever we were um, growing up and he did it after his, like his father owned the lumber yards and he inherited, you know, started working there and inherited them. And my mother um, was a journalist like she was a journalism major although she didn't she, she married my dad and didn't finish college like just barely but she worked in a local newspaper for a long time and then at, um, after a while worked for in the court clerk's office so so in the first generation to get all the way through would be yourself no my dad my dad graduated from MSU yeah that's oh, okay. why Big o, I was always a big OSU fan from, you know, this time. My mother actually went to OU, so, and yeah, she lost out because all of, all three of his, um, her daughters went to OSU. <laughs> so, what year did your dad graduate? Um, think about this. Sixties, fifties? Fifties, like, I think fifty-five. I'm, I'm going by whenever, yeah. Like, like his his age and he was actually young for when he graduated because he started college at 17. I think that back then that happened more often. But So when it was A&M? Yes. Yes. When, he's, when he it changed to Oklahoma State whenever he was there. Okay. That so. was 57, 58. In that okay. Year. So maybe, yeah. Oh, around okay. when he was there. Yeah. So. Yeah. What was his major? Um... Some kind of business, and I don't even remember which one. But business—that's well, okay. Yeah. If he's in the lumber. Yeah, he was going into the sense. lumber business, and so he, yeah, got no, a business not degree. Not forestry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. So did they? They expect you to go to college then? Yes, I always like yeah. assumed I was going to college. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And did you have a teacher in the high school that kind of you wanted to be like I mean, your math teacher yes no yeah that's exactly it i i had a um a math teacher that started like in my um, i had decent math teachers when i was in junior high some pretty decent ones but there was one that was very inspirational that i had all four years of whenever i was in high school that definitely and i always said that i wonder if i'd had a like a really good english teacher if i'd have a whole different career <laughs> But, could be. <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, I think I was already interested in math, but he was a great teacher, so. But so when you graduated, you didn't know what you wanted to do. You just headed to OSU anyway? That's right. Yeah, I, I actually, so I have 
my master's, which would have taken six years. I, my degree is a five one program, so it has like five years of bachelor's and then just one year of master's. Okay. But it took me seven years to do it because I didn't have a major when I was a freshman. <laughs> so I didn't have a major, and then once you started um, in the architectural engineering program, the classes are just like in an order, and so you kind of, you know, if you start late, then you finish late, <laughs> which is... Well, yeah. how did you land on it, on that ar architectural engineering? So I started out actually as an architecture major, and just because I had, I said I was interested in art and math, and somebody had mentioned to me, maybe you would like architecture because you kind of mixes the two things. And so I started out as architecture major, but switched to architectural engineering after my second year of, yeah, and, it, and the program at OSU, you can do that. Like, there's no difference in the program the first two years. And so you can just, you know, try out both, I guess, and then decide. And, and I like the engineering side of it. I always say it's because I like right answers and not as much. Architecture is way more an opinion about whether it's good or not. And I feel like in engineering, there's more, you know, you know you found the a right answer. <laughs> there can be more than one right answer, though. <laughs> more subjective, I guess. Our yes. Is more yes. Subjective. Yeah. And creative. You have to be creative, don't yes. you? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Did you have a professor that you really admired, or? Oh yes, definitely. And I wish you. I did. Um, um, okay. Now I'm, I can't believe this. I'm going blank on his name. Lou Bass is his name, and he was the. Um, guy that figured out whenever they started building these long span domes um, across the country you know for football stadiums or st and stuff like that before there was ever you know now there's a lot of software that does that kind of stuff mm -hmm. he invented the software that 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 does that or the first round of the software that does that and mm -hmm. yeah he was a brilliant guy and very very inspirational like amazingly you know just he would he would get you excited about what you were doing, so. And was his class hard? Yes, definitely. That, that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you survived. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know much about that program either, but I, I, I see students outside of our door a lot studying it. It must be t hard, challenging, challenging. Yes, it's ch challenging, yeah, yeah, definitely. And definitely. spend more time in the lab, mm -hmm. build, building things? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I understand. Lots of long nights. <laughs> And I understand there's different tracks you could take. What and you picked structural. Mm -hmm. Any particular reason why? I just I I think it goes a little bit. It goes back to like since my dad had lumber yards and you know they you know sold stuff to people that were constructing things. I was always very interested in in construction and how you know buildings are built and put together. And so I think that's it. Yeah. Legos or Tinker Toys or yes, yeah, I, yeah, I, I had I played with lots of stuff like that whenever I was a kid, more what you'd say traditional boy um, <laughs> things like that than I did Barbies <laughs> or girl, you know, maybe traditionally girl toys. It was Tinker Toys, right? Isn't that yes, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, or con and then connect or something that starts with a K. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, but I can't remember it either. Yeah, yeah. and you built things with it too. Yes, yeah. 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 Did you have Legos though? Did you actually have Legos? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And did your did your uh, siblings do the same like the same things? No, no, no. Totally different. <laughs> huh? Yeah, that's funny because yeah, there are a lot of people. There's a guy in our office who has his dad was an engineer, and he and all four of his he has four other brothers, all engineers, and then their kids, some of them are engineers also, and not true like that in my family. Yeah. You're, you're it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> my my sister that's just younger than me manages a hotel, and my other si sister, my youngest sister, is a school teacher. Oh. So, yeah, a little different. bit different then. Yeah. <laughs> well, how how did you come to choose OSU? Because your dad had been there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Went there. Yeah. Did he? In, were you given a choice? Let's put it that way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then I actually looked around, and you know, whenever I applied, I applied other places, but. I think in my really in my mind I was always going to go to OSU. So, had you been to campus before you actually showed up as a freshman? Yes, yes. Yeah. 
That makes a difference too. Yes. Yeah. First impressions. Do you remember for the first time you stepped on campus? I remember the first time I went to a football game, just because it was, you know, like huge and, you know, so much different than a high school. Yes. Than the high school in a very small town, <laughs> and just being amazed, like that. Just walking across campus, I probably did them when I was little and don't remember that as much. But I was in high school or junior or maybe junior high whenever I went to the first football game and I was just amazed. <laughs> Were you in 4 H or FFA? No. So you wouldn't have come for that reason. No, I have 4 H a lot. Yeah. So, well, that's, yeah, I mean, that does make an impression. You, it, people say it feels like home, feels familiar. Yes, yeah. right. Yes. Yeah. Where did you live? Um, so I lived in Wilhelm, the dorms that aren't there anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then I lived in a sorority house after that. Okay. So, well, and then, yeah, I went to school for seven years and I lived in a couple apartments after that too. <laughs> well, did, well, did you have a class at about eight year lunch? Um, wow. Yeah. I, I think some of the engineering classes that I was not that interested in, um, like, um, electrical engineering would be maybe the one that I, I'm just not, you know, it's, it's not what I was going to be doing. And so in, in not, I, I don't know, I guess it's maybe not as straightforward to me how like, oh, well, that's obvious that this is how that works. And so, yeah, I didn't like that, <laughs> but you have to get through them all. So just put in the hours, I guess. It's yeah. Spend much time in the library. The library, no. In the architecture building, studying there, yes. <laughs> I mean, I think they have a small library in that building. But yes, I've got this. Yeah, but didn't spend much time in it either. They no, not, not really. Not. I mean, it is little. It's a little bitty library, and mostly you would just go there to check stuff out because it has like three or four tables. I don't know. I didn't notice because they remodeled it like seven or eight years ago. They may have made it bigger and I don't remember I've been to the building it's several not, times but I don't remember it's not very big yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> probably doesn't need to be either I guess yeah so when you when you graduated from OSU what was what was your plan at that point I mean why did you hope to do well before we get there let me ask okay. did you do internships yes I interned up at Wallace <laughs> whenever I was in okay. school I um, interviewed Tom Wallace, who founded our company, um, called to the school and asked for recommendations about for you know if there was anybody that he might want to hire as a summer intern. And somebody recommended me, and I was coming to Tulsa that weekend, so I just met with Tom. I was coming to Tulsa like the next day, like he called on a Friday, and I met with him on a Saturday. I didn't have a resume together because I, you know, I didn't know I was going to be going the next day, and so I. Um, came and and met with Tom and got hired and I've never worked anywhere else so I've never had a resume. <laughs> yeah, they actually, offered me a job, you know. I actually the last year I was in school I worked two days a week for Hollis. So so it was just written in stone. Yeah. <laughs> I liked it and so I stayed. <laughs> Did he hire you that day or or yeah, yeah, that yeah. same day? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Not too many people can say that. Yeah. yeah I, I just think it's funny. Oh, yeah. Because people ask, you know, um, kids, like, what do you look for in a resume? I was like, I'm not yeah. the person to ask. I've never made one. <laughs> what do you think impressed him? Mm -hmm. What made him pick Probably you? the recommendation from somebody at, um, at OSU, because he actually was looking for some help for, for a period of time. And the other person that he was thinking about using was somebody that would be more focused on doing the drawing part of it. And I think he decided that I could be a combination of things. And and so it wasn't, he he didn't interview a whole lot of people, but I guess, like, <laughs> like when we met, we kind of clicked, so. Yeah, good. He was impressed. Yeah. Do you know who actually referred you? Referred you? I, I actually... I think I used to know, and I don't remember. Okay. So yeah, at some point, you know. I actually think it's probably that Professor Bass that, okay. that I mentioned earlier. Well, I know that's how a lot of things happen. Yes. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. No. Well, and we—that's how we try. How we here try to um, 
you know, find good people to hire is kind of have a network of professors that um, typically it's, you know, if you know a professor at the school that you went to, you know, keep in touch with them so that we can find good people. Because it's hard a lot of times, and right now it's one of those times to find good enough people. <laughs> one, because business is so much or just yes, people just yeah. not graduating? Well, we've been growing a lot, so, yeah, I think that's growing well. most Mostly, a, I, I know... There have been times whenever there weren't as many people graduating. I think there's lots of people graduating, but there's also a lot of people hiring. Like we aren't the only ones that are just busy. A lot you of know. building going on? Yes. Or more than building, I know, but yeah. more than a lot. Yes. Of, hmm. Maybe COVID. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You blame your pain on COVID. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> we seem to these days anyway, yes, don't we? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you would have graduated, you wouldn't have graduated, walked on 86, I mean 87, no. When you got your master's was when you went across the stage, I guess. You yes. wouldn't necessarily have done it at the end of four years. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, he was trying to think, he was the president of the university at that point in the 80s. I, oh, I should That was know. before, before oh. Halligan. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I should know, but I, I don't. Should, yeah, I, I totally should know, and I don't. Oh, I don't know who what mine was like, when I was in undergrad either, so scratch that. <laughs> <laughs> so was it difficult for you to, to set up, live in Tulsa versus where you had grown up? Um, not really, but I have relatives in Tulsa, so. So my mom had grown up in Tulsa before she... Got married and moved to a small town. So, so you were familiar so, with it a little yes, bit. Yeah. If if that internship had have happened, or you, did you have your sights set on something else? Wow. Okay. So I guess I started working whenever I was, you know, not to a point where I would have thought about going somewhere else. So I never really thought it thought it through that way. I had some friends though in Chicago, and I thought that was really cool. So, and I still love going to Chicago. Although I went there one time in February. So. I don't think I'd like to live there. <laughs> Six I months to visit out of the year. there in other months. <laughs> so, how, how do you know how your family ended up in Hobart? Or they, I mean, grandparents and great grandparents. I, I actually don't. So it's funny. Somebody asked me that the other day. Like, why did they pick? And, and I really don't know. <laughs> they needed a lumber yard at some point. Huh? Yes, yeah, I guess it was, seemed like it did some sort of, you know, analysis and and uh, decided that that was a good place, an area to start a lumber yard. And, yeah, because they were all five of my dad's lumber yards. Were, well, four of them were, and then one of them was in Mustang. <laughs> um, but, but they were all four in that area, so I think, you know, just must have somebody realized that there weren't enough and you know yeah, it seems like the only thing I know about Hobart is they have a Carnegie had a Carnegie library yes yeah and I think are they a square courthouse square? yes yeah, yeah. And so that's my extent of my knowledge <laughs> for that yeah I like the old old squares like yeah. anytime where people where towns have kept those alive I think they're great I like them too and that's my husband's geography, so that's why I knew the town part. Yeah, yeah. And being in the art library, I was curious yeah, about Carnegie yes. Libraries. Yeah. So it's a cool, it's a cool old library. Is it still functioning as a library? Yes. Like, as far as you know. Yeah. Okay. When was the last time you were on campus? OSU campus. Well, last Thursday, because I went to the football game. <laughs> oh, okay. But I go fairly often. Yeah, whenever we did the the seat. Um, honors thing they brought you to, and they said well, we have somebody who can show you around campus and I was like yeah I really don't need that <laughs> I come here a lot um I have I've I've had for several years nieces who are at OSU and I have one that's a senior this year so I go visit a lot so I always say, keep your keep your toe on you you yes. keep up all the yeah. changes well, and, and my question. youngest sister just told me yesterday that she that she and her husband have decided they're going to move to Stillwater so then maybe I'll have even more reasons to go. <laughs> well, the newest thing, I think tomorrow they're dedicating a new statue across uh -huh. from Bennett oh, cool. on, the lawn, on the library lawn. Uh-huh. Hargis. Oh, cool. I mean, they're going to be right across, I mean, across I from each that. other. That's cool. Yeah. They've put it in place. It's still covered, but 
that's more of the unveiling. So you'll have to check that out yes. next time you were there. Yes. <laughs> so let's educate the kids who, and people who might not know what a structural engineer does. Um, just basically, I guess. So I always tell people that architects figure out what they want a building to look like and structural engineers make sure that it stands up. That's the simple version of it. But but really, you know, the more complex version is that there are, whenever you have a building, there are always um, forces like wind or snow, um, you know, in Oklahoma, tornadoes, um, like higher, higher winds. Um, and and in some areas, earthquakes. We kind of have had a few of those in Oklahoma, but mm -hmm. uh, we do work all over the U.S. So I, I also have had to design a building for um, earthquakes. And so we have to figure out, you know, both how to hold up a building from its own weight, but also those other forces trying to, um, you know, f do a, a lateral load on it as well and make sure that. You know, it's stable for the life of <laughs> the building. So. Well, that's where your math comes in. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. So, what's been the most challenging one you've tried, had to do? Oh wow. So one of the first, this is like one of the first projects I did that was something really different, and I had to really do a lot of a lot of research. So, I'll say that one, but but there's. Probably if I stopped and thought, I could tell you some others, but I did a yacht sales office that was out in the um, water in Galveston. So it, it had um, wave surge forces and, um, you know, had like all of the different, you know, things that you had to do to in that area, like on coastal things, there are certain things you have to do to make sure that if there is a storm surge that certain parts of the building are breakaway so that they um, so they don't have you know it would like further damage the building and make it um, continue to so you have to have all these things that that kind of are designed to if the if the load gets very high at all that they just float away <laughs> and it's just really different and interesting but it was tiny little building but was something that I was just like, I have never learned anything about this. I have to go research a lot, to, but it was and, interesting. And where would you research on online or would yeah. you have to go? Actually, uh, the, the, it, in that case, like FEMA has a lot of documents that um, addresses stuff like that. So they, they do, they, they do fund a lot of research into things like that, um, earthquakes, um, hurricanes, um, tornadoes, and so there's a lot, and they're all free documents, so it's cool. And now they're online, I guess, back Yes, yeah, tomorrow. back then I had to order this book and wait for it to come, and you know, <laughs> I think it, because the government docs didn't pop into digital a lot till the late 90s, maybe, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the 80s, yeah, that would take a little extra time. Yes. But you'd figure that in, I guess, and people yeah. other, other people would have to do that. How'd they pick you to do that, do you know? How you how that landed in your lap? <laughs> I actually, I actually don't. I guess you know maybe I was at the time the, the most available person in the office. We were really small when I first started working in the office. There were eight of us, and now, last time I checked, we have about two hundred fifty. Wow, that is <laughs> the summer we had about two hundred two hundred sixty at one point because we had several summer interns. But in this office or uh, no, or we have. Um, uh, Five other offices. So now they know. Oh, not all in Oklahoma. No, we have an office in Oklahoma City. Is the only other one that's in Oklahoma. So, oh. so you get to you do get to travel around then. Yes, yeah. I'm going to Denver on Monday to go visit that office. So, are you supervising people there too, or just? Um, yeah, I actually that's the only other office that I have. Somebody who works for me, and I have two people in Denver who work for me. So, so you have to go check in on them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> On a regular basis, or just if some a problem comes up, and um, try to do it on a regular basis. But it's one of these things that I feel like you can blame everything on COVID. But I've been not doing as good a job with that mm. lately. A because we got so busy, and then B just you know couldn't travel as easily. So do Zoom. Yeah. So <laughs> Zoom away. Yes. Exactly. 
are you working on a project these days? Yeah, multiple ones. Uh, we do, my group that I that works for me does all retail stuff and we do a lot of really small projects and then some big ones and including the biggest ones are like warehouses. So we've been doing a lot of, it seems like that that's get, getting bigger and bigger that warehouses are being built everywhere. That's right. So everybody's ordering online. <laughs> yes, I think that's not the percent of the reason that warehouses are being built everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I, I went to Houston about two months ago and I was driving somewhere and there were just all of these big, new, huge warehouses. And it's just, I think it's, I probably could find that in most cities lately that there's just, and a lot of the ones that we work are just spec warehouses. Like somebody's building a million square foot warehouse, hoping that they can rent it out. Hmm. That's just amazing to me because a million square feet is a lot of square feet to have and, and just, you know, on spec that you're going to be able to rent it. Kind of blows my mind. Yeah. Most of them aluminum <laughs> in that case. Um, most of the ones we're doing have um, concrete exterior walls. So, so then, you have, then you have to worry about for sure quakes. Yes. Right. Yeah. So on a typical day, what would you do these days? Um, I would say most of the, my day is like spent juggling balls, like making sure that everybody who works for me is like has all the resources that they need to do um, their projects. And like earlier today, I was checking a, another one of the engineers that works for me, her project, so it could go out today. And so I, that's a lot of what I do, although every once in a while I still do a few projects here and there. Which would you rather do, the administrative side or the actual hands-on? The combination that I do, I actually, I kind okay. of, I, I don't, I would not like to just completely be dis disconnected from doing the projects because I feel like you can't relate, like at some point you get disconnected and you can't relate to what people, you know, the struggles that people are doing, what they're having, how they're, how they're getting their projects out. And so I feel like the combination is the best, but it is difficult with trying to do everything else that I need to do to do that at all. So I tend to do, you know, projects with really short deadlines and that I can knock out in a day or two. <laughs> or you're in a position to get to pick what those are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah, that, so helps. that helps. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, and and the other thing I would say, I actually do like to travel. So I like going and do, you know, traveling and going to our other offices and or, you know, whenever somebody needs to go look at a project, I know, I don't, I don't, I like to do that. I wouldn't want to do it full time, but I, I like going out and seeing what projects we've built. Well, you get to do a little variety in, yes, in your yes, day. Then. Yes. Is it an eight-hour day? Not typically. typically. <laughs> not usually, but not too bad. I mean, maybe nine. <laughs> Not anything like a 16-hour day. <laughs> well, a 40-hour week or more. more? More. More, but not. I mean, yeah. The manageable more. Yes, yeah. So are you usually here by 8? Yes. Wow, yeah. okay. And stay till 4.35-ish. Yeah, usually I stay till about 6, but okay. yeah. I might get here at 8 and stay till about 6. But. Manage to cram what you need to do in those hours. Yes, yeah. And then for fun, you go to wrestling. Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> or sports. Or oh, yes. sports. Yes. <laughs> and do you do, do you do some mentoring? Mentoring? Yes. Well, do STEM, STEM functions yeah, around so, town? Um, one of the things that I do that I think is really cool is there's this um, group of that's Engineering Alliance for the Arts, and they're based out of San Francisco. And they have this STEM program where you go into high school and introduce um, students to STEM professions, and you teach them about you know how projects work and how you would do a project. But then their project that they do is to build um, a bridge, and it's very fun. And we do it over a whole semester or so. And they had I don't know like. 15 schools in the San Francisco Bay Area and an engineer who used to work in our office one summer was very involved in it and talked us into 
being their first um, kind of group that did it outside of San Francisco area. And we've been doing it for seven or eight years. We do it just in the spring. I think, I think I'm pretty sure in San Francisco they do it fall and spring and they have way more volunteers than we do here in Tulsa. But, um, but it, it's, it's, it, I think it's a really cool program because it teaches, not only teaches kids about the whole construction, so they may not want to become an engineer or we get architects to help us um, um, with the classes and, but you know, they may not only be an engineer and they might not be going to want to be an architect, but maybe they go, but you know, I could be in the construction industry and work for a construction company and maybe they didn't think of that as a career option before because they didn't get introduced to it in that program talks a lot about you know how all of these you know how it's a teamwork thing to build any kind of structure and how it works and I it's a very it's a very cool program yeah, I need to go to one of those so I know all the different parts how they all connect to I mean yeah. people just don't know I mean the average yeah. person doesn't yeah. yeah or at least in high school high school level they don't yes do you do any, with high schools, like go into high school, do any lectures, that type of thing? I have before, but I haven't in a really long time. We have people in our office that do it. Okay. Sporadically. Yeah. About I college know. level. Um, I have, again, I have before. I've gone over to LSU and done that at um, the architecture school. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, Give it's fun. It. Yeah, I could see, see you doing <laughs> Especially with all the experience that you've had, yeah. And you, so you you've been here. I was trying to do my math. Oh, thirty years almost. Forty. Actually, uh, it's like thirty-five. Counting yeah. back whenever I started when so, I was in college. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, yeah, that's how we counted. So back when yeah, how long have you been a principal? About twenty-five. So quite a quite a quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything above that? Um, I, I guess if the CEO, like we have a CEO, but yeah, like we all report just to the CEO, so that would be the only other. And how many are on the board? Um, there are five of us. Okay, and do they rotate off, or once you're on, you're on? Theoretically, we didn't, we have, we've only had a board for about four years, and we've had the same five people on there the entire time, just because... I, I guess that means that nobody is like <laughs> clamoring to replace us. <laughs> so I, I think at some point we probably definitely will, you know, mix that up, but we haven't yet. <laughs> Were you surprised to be asked to be a principal or how, how did that work? I, they talked to me about it before, you know, that I was on that track before, okay. so not completely surprised, but... But like maybe the when it happened, yes, it happened earlier than I necessarily thought it would. So, have you always been in this building? No, we used to be kind of on the other side of downtown, on the west side of downtown. And then Tom Wallace, who founded our company, um, he owns this building, and he had a, it used to be an old warehouse that was just like homeless people were living in it, and that he, you know, they took off the. That that was also a brick wall over on that side where where it's all glass now and um, redid it and I think it's cool it yeah is. and when, whenever he did it this part of downtown there was a, not much up here at all and so it's kind of cool to see the whole to be part of the whole revitalization of this area of downtown it has so, changed a lot in the last what fifteen yeah, years yeah. at least maybe at least fifteen About years that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's the first time I've been down here on this in this part. I've been to OSU Tulsa yes. camp, campus on the right. other side of the highway, but not down in here. Yeah. I need to explore Tulsa more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whenever we first for instance, when we first moved to this part of Tulsa, there was like one restaurant or two. And now there's just, you know, you can go to within walking distance there's probably twenty different restaurants, so Kind of amazing difference. Yeah. Is, have they about reached? I mean, is there anything more to do left at areas to develop in this in this section of yeah, it? I don't, not no. really. I mean, I guess you know, if you went a few a few more blocks each direction or whatever, or if they tear things down, 
the, the building to the north of us, which is a project that we did. I didn't work on it, but um, they tore down two warehouses. One of them was the spaghetti warehouse. Okay, and I have been there. They, yeah, that yeah they tore down two warehouses and built a 10-story building, so I guess they can continue to do that. <laughs> But I like the character of the old warehouses, so I hope they don't do too much of it. <laughs> yeah. Do you live close by, or do you have to commute uh, in? From... I have a 10 minute drive. So oh, not that's bad. not bad. Yeah. No. So, do you vote? I don't know a lot about the structural engineer side of things either. What pops to my mind is the concrete canoe things that they did on campus. Oh, uh -huh. Is that something that would be in that? In yes, the right. That uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So, so, that is like the people that are getting a civil engineering degree and my degrees in architectural engineering so slightly different but i took like lots of classes with people that were doing that so yeah same same realm <laughs> yeah, same realm. what's the main difference then or is there a significant difference i so the the main difference is, is that with the architectural engineering degree you take a lot of architecture classes and okay. civil engineers don't take any architecture classes so i think it gives like at least for me like we work with architects a lot it gives us more kind of an understanding of what they do but but in our office what we hire for people to do structural engineering is probably like 50 50 architectural engineers and civil engineers so you know it's just two different ways the civil engineers actually have more um, classes that they take that I think you could use for like infrastructure type projects and in architectural engineering we mostly focused on buildings <laughs> on buildings yeah uh, the materials for buildings yes and, yeah and how tall to make them are. yes <laughs> or what how far you have to go down in order to make them so, yes so yeah, tall yeah, yes in Oklahoma, that can be tricky with the soil different. You know, yes, different yeah. the soils yeah. Yeah. and the wind and the tornadoes and yeah. the <laughs> yeah. quakes. Yeah, and, and our self-induced earthquakes. <laughs> so you're a, prof a licensed professional engineer, right? That's what the PE yes. stands for. Right. And then the SE is licensed Stru structural, structural engineer. engineer. Right. Yeah. Some states, it's only a PE license, and some states, it's a structural engineering license. Are those hard to get? Um, so you have to take a test. I'm assuming yeah, you have to you take, take a, a test. test yeah. Are the tests yeah. very difficult? Yeah, and the structural engineering test is more difficult than the professional. I mean, it takes twice as long. It's a 16-hour exam versus the eight-hour exam, and, wow. and the pass rate on it is pretty low. <laughs> you can so, take it multiple times. Yes. Or yeah, inspections. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's yeah. So. Definitely, sometimes people take one half and then the other half and don't even try to focus on studying for the whole thing all at once. But some people will just go take it all, you know, like if I'm going to study, I'm going to get this out of the way. So, did you pass it the first time? Yes, the whole thing. but I passed it way back before it was a 16 hour exam. <laughs> I know the CPAs like that. I've heard you have to yeah, you can take right. it. In yeah, it's like seven different. It used yeah. to be back when I had a roommate who was the C, who got her CPA whenever I first moved to Tulsa. And yeah, there, back then it was seven different yeah. parts, and yeah, lots of times people didn't pass. Yeah, but it took two or three times. For yes, me. yeah, <laughs> exactly. So you pass first go around. Yeah, and then you just do continuing ed along the way yes, to keep it right. updated. Yeah, and do you do you have to do that in each state? Yes, each state has different requirements, but you can use the same hours for different states, but you do have to keep track because I'm licensed in like 42 states. So, and my licenses, ex most of them expire at, di expire at different times during the year. So you have to make sure that you have, you know, if they require 16 hours, that you have to have 16 hours in the right time frame. So I tend to do a lot of continuing education and have way more than I need so that I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> you have a spreadsheet keep up with all of this? Yeah, actually a database, but yeah. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> yes. It takes that. Huh? Yes. Yeah, so that you can constantly kind of check and see where you are. Yeah. Well, I did read that you were good at that, that pro computer programming software. 
I, I, I actually work on our databases, which is something I really like doing. It's, it's interesting to kind of figure out how to, I mean, to me, the part that's interesting about the databases is to figure out how to analyze, you know, numbers and how we're doing it on projects and, you know, be able to look at things a little bit differently by the data. So. Kind of like your professor. Yes. Kind yeah. of like, yeah. Okay. Well, then you, you share that in-house improve your, to improve quality, quality well. Well, maybe it's not the right word. You keep up with other people, can keep up with their what's yeah. going on too. Yeah. With, right, yeah, see how efficient we're being in different areas. That efficient, that's the word yeah. I was thinking of. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that part of your job description these days, or you just locked it and feel the need? Saw a need and feel yeah. the void? Yeah, I, more it started out like that, and um, and then now it's part of my job description. Like, <laughs> Figure it out. Huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wow, I'm at 48 three states. That's impressive. Is hmm. that is that typical? No, no, not really. Tom Wallace, who founded our company, was licensed in all 50 states, and I've never done, I've never gotten that far. <laughs> well, I don't like too many. Yeah, I know. I could just go get the rest of them, but <laughs> which one would be the which one's the holdout? I mean, which one can you get? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you have a New York? No, I don't. Do you have a Chicago, well, Illinois? No, since you wanted to. No. Yeah. Uh, so those are ones that, that but, well, New York's not that way. I don't know why I've never have gotten New York. I think I just kind of got, I was trying to get licensed everywhere so that we had kind of a duplicate license and my group was doing work everywhere. And I, I to be, to tell you the truth, I think I just got to a point where I was like, other people can do the rest of these. <laughs> Because you know, it's, plus it's expensive. I guess you have to pay. pay yeah, the company the, the company pays for oh, it, so yeah. which is good. But yeah. yeah, but it is kind of a to keep up with it and make sure you're not. Well, if you don't need it, actually need it. Yeah, it's one less thing to <laughs> have in your database. Huh? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, where's the furthest away you've done a, a job? Galveston or further away than that? Oh, I've done projects in Hawaii, so except oh, okay. I never got to go visit them, darn it. Yes. <laughs> and Alaska. We've done oh, multiple okay. projects in Alaska. And Alaska you, is one of the states that I'm licensed in. And did you get to so, go? No. I've no. never been to Alaska. And it's funny because you have to take a course to get licensed in Alaska, you have to take a course on Arctic engineering. So and and it's it's, there's different ways you can take it. You can take it as a correspondence course through the University of Alaska Anchorage, <laughs> or you can fly to Seattle and they have a course there and for a week, or you can go to um, Alaska and take it as a course for a week. And I elected to stay in Oklahoma and do it. I don't know why. <laughs> Too busy with other things. I yeah, guess. I think I thought I was too busy, but you know, in hindsight, I should have at least gone to Seattle. <laughs> you know, way more fun. Have you been Have you been happy or satisfied with the choices you made to, that brought you here? Yes, to, yeah, definitely. If you hadn't have picked architectural engineering back at LSU, did you have a plan B? If you hadn't liked that, what, what you were going to... Yeah. I always think like the, only, the, thing, the only other thing that I thought I might want to be as an aerospace engineer, like I thought that was just fascinating. But. Second career. Yeah, so I'm still an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it didn't vary too far off because it's still an engineering degree, but... Yeah, it's still a lot of math and science and yeah. probably drawing and you yeah. How would it help if you didn't get motion sick? Do you get, <laughs> get motion sick? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a typical day, you get here about eight, you said. Uh -huh. And you've been involved with professional associations, president of something. Yeah, I was I'm a past president of the National Council of Structural Engineers Associations, and so they have member organizations in almost every state. Um, just, there's a few that don't have. Um, and um, they call them SEAs, and uh, 
there's a few states that don't have an SEA, but um, so yes, I was. I was on the board there for six years and the president, the, the last, well, not the last year because I was past president the last year I was on, but um, it was very, very interesting and um, great that because I got to meet people from engineers from all over the country. And I think it's very, very helpful that, you know, if I know somebody and know like, well, what, you know, what is the practice in Florida on doing this? I can, I have, I know people I can call and, and people in our office have asked me, like, um, we actually, we were talking earlier about professional engineer versus um, structural engineer. And so Oklahoma switched to where you have to be a structural engineer about two years ago. And um, there was something the other day where we were talking about, well, I wonder what other firms that have an SE, what do they do about this? And so I was able to email, you know, multiple people that I'd met and ask them. And actually what we found out was slightly different than what we would have guessed. So it was, in that case, was very helpful, you know, for our company that we were able to learn that. So, Keep so, so that network is really, really good. Really important. So you would su suggest people get involved in that? Yes, profession. yes, absolutely. It's very rewarding. Very. Being the president for a two-year term or? Just one. One year? Yeah. One year. So that's still a lot of time. It takes up a lot of time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, well, that's the whole thing because I was a board member for two years, then I was the, I guess it's seven years whenever you add it all up because then I was the secretary for two, that one is a two-year one, and then I was the vice president and the president and the past president. So that is a total of seven years. So it's like a huge commitment. And well, and I think I don't think all organizations do it that way, but I think that's a great way to have people that are stay on there consistently and do that, so that you know you kind of get a feel for maybe what you really want to do and accomplish, and you have plenty of time to kind of do it instead of just going in there and making waves and leaving. <laughs> were there were there more the ratio male female? 50-50 or? So back whenever I was on the board, less you know, less than 50-50, there were maybe three women and the total is nine. But they're, they're definitely at 50-50 now. I think they may have more women than men right now. So, Well, in the profession as a whole, do you think it's balancing out like that? Yes, now? absolutely. Yeah. It's interesting because I, um, one of the things that NCSEA does, they have a committee that looks at that kind of stuff and, and that they do this right, but I know like a lot of times I see stuff that's not done right and they go, well, women aren't making any progress because we don't have, you know, 50% of the women throughout the whole career. But I said, you have to look at it as, you know, what about, you know, women, you know, under 40, what's the percentage there? Because you're really not going to find that many women that are over 60 because not that many women were going to college and getting engineering degrees then so you can't look at it that way and they actually realize that and look at it the right way and so they report it in those different and it, to me it, you can see the numbers improving and that it's hopeful that that definitely everything's you know going in the right direction <laughs> by cohort type thing mm -hmm. yeah. yeah I mean I, I know they say now there's more female vets Veterinarians, yes. yes. So maybe are balancing out more. Well, too. in the architecture school at OSU, they they have for the last several years had slightly, you know, like fifty five percent women. Well, when you were there, what was the ratio? I would say maybe twenty percent women. Yeah. So you had a few in your classes. Yes, classmates. Yeah. Any professors that were females? Architecture professors, yeah, are, yes, but not in the engineering professors. I have to look. I don't know what if they do now or not. They'd say they do by now. Yeah. When I think, like, um, I'm on the advisory board for the seat advisory board, and I'm trying to remember, but there are more deans, uh, more heads of the colleges of engineering, like all the different um, degrees that you can get in engineering, there are more females than males, heads oh, of the colleges, okay. which I think is cool. Yeah, that's progress. Yeah. 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 
yeah, the current dean thinks that's very important, and I think that's great. Yeah, I can see it being more in architecture too. I mean, that's design is a little bit different than the hands-on yeah. structural that's stuff. Def definitely, whenever I was in school, like whenever I said that there were twenty percent women, not done more architecture students, not architectural engineering, but <laughs> but we had a few architectural engineering. <laughs> Well, structural, I mean, with your dad being in the lumber business, would you go home and try things out on on uh, spare pieces of lumber laying around? No, not really, but it kind of made me un like under like mentally understand that a lot better. So I was thinking some wood stronger than others. So yeah, uh, some concrete's better than others. Yes, <laughs> right. Yeah, that's the extent of my knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I use a different concrete mix and you get very different things. <laughs> and then if it's metal, there needs to be a ground, something to ground it. Yeah. Does that sound right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's my dad speaking. He's got to have it grounded. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever that is. <laughs> so once you got into your career, did you have someone that kind of mentored you, took you, took you under their wing and Yeah, there were yeah, bit? there were several people in the office here who were who I would say were mentors, so which is good. Male, female, mm, all okay. males. At because that, yeah, at that point, we didn't have yeah. as many. But I would say in this office, I never felt like that that mattered. Like that anybody would think I couldn't do something because I was female. I don't think everybody always has that same experience, but certainly I have here, and and I think that another is another thing that is getting way better. Whenever yes. I was a young engineer and I would go out to job sites, you know, the contractors would, well now, darling, you can't do that. And, you know, just kind of speak down partially because I was young, but partially because I was female. And I, I just don't think you get that anymore. Mm -hmm. So. Well, when you would go out to sites then, was there a dress code? I mean, would you would you be in a in dress or slacks or do you, yeah. do you remember? Mo mostly, I'd wear jeans that day. Yeah. yeah. Did, okay, yeah. so that was a that didn't play into their no <laughs> mindset either. So, yeah. 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 Do you go out to well? You do go to sites nowadays yeah. too. Yeah. You have a hard Not a hard hat. Yes. Yeah. Take boots. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. So I mentioned contract. Concrete canoe was that part of what you did too, or was that after your time there that they did the concrete canoe? After my time after, there, yeah. I don't know if they still do it, but they did it for a while. It's always fun to watch yeah, them on the they, I think they do, but they have regional competitions, so it may be like that one year it's so far away that you don't hear much about it. Yeah, that, that sounds that sounds right. I can't imagine a concrete canoe staying afloat, but I know yeah. there's the engineers <laughs> will figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you have to do projects like that though? I mean, build models? Yes, definitely. But yeah, not not out of anything that's like real that would, you know, like is the same material, but just mostly to see, you know, what the shapes do and what it looks like. So not necessarily built out of something that you could translate to, which like the concrete canoe, you could translate that to, you could really build something that you could use really and do that, but the, these models would be just, you know, I mean, how it's working. Supplies you'd get from the bookstore, I mean, would you have a certain a supply list that you yeah. need to get? Yeah. Not just con uh, cardboard, it'd be other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lots of cutting things up and <laughs> pitching it and starting over. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I don't think I could. I'm not creative enough to figure some of that out, out either. Math I could do a little bit. So if you were encouraging or if someone was asking you what about being doing what you do, what would be some attributes you would ask? You know, tell them they need, would need to do math. Yeah. What else? Um, be good at. I I think a creative mind, so you can see different solutions, not just. That's what I. I one time, another engineer. Whenever I was at um, something where we were talking to high school girls about going into math, and she said that 
people always want to hire engineers because they kind of are problem solvers. And I feel like all kinds of engineers, that's what you get is somebody who likes to solve problems and is interested in solving problems. And so if you're, so that's what I think if, is, is if somebody is interested in kind of look, you know, analyzing things and looking at them and seeing, well, I could do this a different way and then I, and then it would be faster or I could do this a different way and, and it would turn out this way if you have, if that kind of stuff is interesting, then, hmm. you know, then that's the kind of person who would want to be not just a structural engineer, but any kind of engineer. And be visual, be able to yes. visualize, right. visualize yeah. stuff and, yes. do, and try new things, I guess. Yes. And yeah. new not things. be afraid to try new things, definitely. Yeah. Well. Wow. Yeah. And about people skills? Definitely. Um, because it, in specific to being a structural engineer, you know, we work with architects and we have, you know, need to, you have the, you know, you have a client and you want to make them, make them happy and do um, stuff. And so you're always constantly having to, you know, negotiate how, how, what needs to happen in this building so that we get the best solution. So definitely need good communication skills. And you might not always agree. Right, exactly. And how you how you have those conversations when you don't agree is is key. <laughs> and do they teach you that at OSU? Yes. Yeah, they teach yeah, you yeah. some of that. Yeah. And also, I think do really well with teaching is what I felt like I got was how to do presentations and how to present, you know, here's my idea and, and being able to present your idea and, and present yourself is huge. And I think OSU does a great job with that. I know that 4 Hers say that too, if they were in 4 Hers, oh, they, right. they, yeah. they, they, they do a lot of presentations yeah. along the way. Yeah. Hmm. So you would have speech be part of your, no, I guess it'd just be part of your program if you were. Right, yeah, as long as it's part of the program somehow, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be necessarily a separate class, but it needs to me, a good quality program needs to include something like that where you learning those skills it's a team effort i've learned yes. from it it's a team yeah. it's a team yeah. effort. well and, and i have a, a friend who works here who went to wyoming the university of wyoming and she she had a class in report writing that i that i that i wish i had because to me i struggle with like i think it's not natural to like do because it's a different kind of writing and so you know being able to write reports and stuff talk in engineering language and make it clear to somebody who's not an engineer is an important skill too. <laughs> that makes you think if you miscommunicated, I guess, if, if but not necessarily from your side, from their side, from they, right. they misunderstood. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a wide variety of things. Yes. Is there a part you like the least? Hmm. Think I know there's something, but <laughs> uh, a negative. Um, yeah. Just when things get too hectic, I would say, yeah, which has been that way for like the last two years. So. <laughs> because of COVID, or because of <laughs> a little bit, a little bit of, of both, but just that during COVID we got so busy that, mm. you know. Like you want to be able to accomplish everything, and if you can't keep up, then you have to say no. Yeah. 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 And it seems the opposite that I was. T I tell Joe, yeah. like my group works in retail. You would think that retail would be nothing, but now they were trying to reinvent re retail. So mm -hmm. we have been really busy reinventing re retail, working on you know retail with robotics and stuff like that. <laughs> Less people in the stores. Yes. Yeah. Uh, rework on their space, I guess. Yes, exactly. But so. how would that fit in with the structure? Well, I guess, I don't know, what, remodeling the store so it serves yeah. different purposes. Right, and, and what I'm talking about with robotics is like three-story robot, like you have to have a framework for those to travel through. So that's what we've been involved with a lot. In Tulsa. Yeah. In Tulsa. Yeah. 
and see that with the, like uh, warehouses that do Amazon orders or something, I yeah. guess. Yeah, I, I'll say coming soon to a Walmart near you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember if we've done one in Stillwater, but yes. <laughs> well, okay. well, we're just now getting used to those blue carts being everywhere where people are doing their grocery shopping for you. Yes, yeah. No, so this would be something different too. Huh? Yes, right, yeah. We're, it's a robot doing your grocery shopping where's, for you. Where's the, fun in, where's the fun in that? Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like to go pick up my own bananas. I don't, yeah. You know, I think there's a balance there, and I actually went um, one time to Boston to go look at, you know, where they were figuring all this out, and that is their dream thing, is that there is a balance that you would never, there are certain things that you want to go shop and see and feel, but, you know, maybe if, I'm trying to think of something that, maybe if you know you need Band-Aids, you just could have, have, have them bring it to you. There's certain things that you, you you don't need to like you bought them before. It doesn't matter. You can you know order it online, but a balance of there's like a small store where you where there's things that you want to see and buy, and then and then a kind of larger place out back where <laughs> you order all the other stuff, like your fruits and veggies. Like yeah. your fruits and veggies or yes. your can of green beans, it's a can of green beans. Yeah, right, exactly. You know, if you know the brand you like, then you don't really need to, like, go look at all the cans of green beans. That's exactly that's a great analogy, yeah. You can't see that coming into play with shoes and clothes. No, really. Uh, no. Groceries. It's frustrating to me to, like, shop online and buy clothes because then I wind up having to send half of them back and then your pen shipping charges. And <laughs> yeah, it's frustrating. So, isn't it? But there are certain things that you can just order online and it's easier. <laughs> I think COVID has changed a lot of that. Part, yeah. You know, part of that, that too. I'm surprised your business has picked up during COVID or aren't you? Yeah. Um, Do you know what I that's think part, to? I think part of it is, especially on the civil engineering side, that there are a lot of infrastructure projects that got started and, you know, like doing things. I think because interest rates were so low that lots of developers that, that makes sense. are starting, like the thing I was talking about, build the million million square foot warehouse that's just a spec warehouse because, you know, kind of there's trying to in, in, inspire the economy. There have been, you know, there's money out there to do these things. And so. And I guess there may be extra time since they're not doing these other things. Yeah. Right. Well, that makes sense, too. Yeah. I just haven't thought of it that way. Yeah. I, well, that's not what we guessed whenever COVID very first hit. We had this small group of us that came and made a list of all the things that we want to get done now that we're going to have all this extra time. Yeah. <laughs> Check off maybe two of them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we've never had time to do it because we've just been so busy. So. Well, I mean, with COVID, it impacted your ability to communicate with the whole office with Zoom and all of that to that infrastructure was yes. established now and more people still working from home. Yeah, we still have some people who work from home and people who work from home, you know, t two days a week or three days a week just because, you know, they're more comfortable. We have several people that that had been, you know, commuting, commuting a very long way and went, you know, <laughs> I could get more done if I could just come to the office three days a week and not have to drive an hour each way. So, which makes sense. And is there a way to check on their work that way if they're doing it from home? Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, you have to just accountability is why you you have to be more purposeful about how you communicate, you know, mm -hmm. and look things over and you know, but it. It's doable. It, it, it's doable, and you can make it work. And but I think the balance is better if there's if they're in the office sometimes. You know, the not seeing anybody at all for a really long time. I I feel like long term that's going to be a problem. Plus, I the, our biggest thing that I think it would be a problem long term is training new people. Like, you know, I think there's a lot of things that you learn by being in an office and you overhear somebody else talking about something. And even though you didn't realize you learned something that day, you did. <laughs> and so, you know, I think it's better to be in an office, but I think maybe we're always going to have a little bit of a balance where people will work a little bit from home. 
times are changing again. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's been it's been it's been very very different with all of that with other companies too uh, across the state and other things. Yes. And I know people are reluctant to come back. Right. To the to the. But then some of us miss the interaction. You you do oh, right. Yeah. You do gain gain from that. Yeah, as I'm well. a person that I would rather be around people and. I, I do miss the interactions that people do not. <laughs> but you get some good ideas from other people too. That's right. You know, yeah. Or yeah. see a problem that you they see something you didn't see. Right, exactly. Yeah. I think the interaction is very, very important. Yeah. Well, I have to figure out a way to do it a little bit better. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> do you envision a time when they're all back and you require them to all be back? Or that's even being discussed. Yes, we so in our office, so require everybody to be back will be difficult because we've always, for years, had certain people that um, okay. have worked from home. Uh, I have a lady that works for me that um, had children and decided like she didn't work for two years, and then when she came back, her kids were really young, and she said, "But I can, you know, work a couple hours a day," and we're like, "We can make that work. <laughs> like we can figure out a way to give you something that you can do." A couple of hours a day, and then now she works more like four to five hours a day. But she, you know, kind of has slowly increased. And so I don't know that she'll ever come back in the office. And then we've also had people who've moved, like who are great employees, but moved somewhere um, pretty far away. But we wanted to keep them working, so they work from home. But I would say the vast majority, yeah, I think that that we will have people mostly back with keeping the flexibility of, you know, if you, if you need to meet the plumber at your house, you can work from home that day. No. <laughs> I think in the type of work you do doesn't necessarily have to be done between 8 and 5 then, right. is what yeah. you're saying too. Yeah. I mean, that yeah. makes a difference too. Yes. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, Mary that I was talking about that had her children whenever she first started working. I'm pretty sure she did it after her kids went to bed, and so she would work for two hours a day from like ten to midnight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, well, I guess if you're doing stuff at the courthouse, you have to be. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we, yeah, we don't have to do that, but I mean, it does limit because that you can't have a person like that that can interact with clients and you know do certain types of things. So you, so it does kind of limit where you can have them do that. Certainly. If somebody's a good employee, I'm going to find out a way to make it work like that. Well, have you had have you had clients that all you've done has been through over the internet and not actually never met them? I actually have had that for a long time because wow. a lot of the work we do is across the country, and so um, we, you know, just started working with somebody who's in Virginia and you know not met them for quite a while. So, yeah, I, I specifically, I remember meeting an architect when I was in Virginia, and I was somewhere, and I heard his voice, and I was like, wait, I heard that on the phone. <laughs> and, yeah, I had never met him and ran into him. <laughs> That's a coincidence. Then. Yeah. So, phone and email and computer nowadays, you yes. can, you yeah, can you do can, bulk of your work. Most, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, a, a high school student thinking about this as a career might be tempted by that. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Too. The flexibility the flexibility. Right. Mm. What else would they need to be good at? Mm. Or at least interested in, not necessarily good yeah. at. I mean you can acquire some skills. I just I, I, I think I always say that everything always comes back to communication, like being decent yeah. a decent communicator. Because when communication comes in different forms too, because whenever we're doing drawings for how to um, how to build a building, it's a form of communication, like telling somebody, you know, what that, you know, what, you know, what what the parts and pieces are, and making sure that that can happen in that order. And so it's a it's it, it's a totally different form of communication. But I feel like people who can communicate better verbally can do that better too so that can interpret an architectural design floor plan yeah 
yeah. or at least make one that yes. other people can. Yeah. Have you do, have you designed houses? Um, well, I don't think I ever have. No, I mean in our office we've done a few, but I don't think I've ever done a house. So it's bigger, bigger yeah. projects than that. Yeah. Well, when you buy a house, have you bought a house? Yes. Have you bought a house? You go around thinking, oh, uh, yeah. this is, around, done, this is done, done, right. this is yeah. done wrong. Yeah. You don't want to check that some of us wouldn't then. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah. I had a friend who was having a house built, and, and she had them, like, they had kind of a standard floor plan that they'd been, you know, one of those developments where they're building the same floor plan cookie, multiple places. Cookie cutter. And, yes, and she <laughs> asked them to change several things. And then I went out there and I said, they aren't building this like you asked them to change it. They're building it, you know, like whatever their standard way was. And she said something to them and they treated her like she's an idiot. I, I think hoping that maybe if they got done with it, that she wouldn't make them tear it out. <laughs> and so, so she said, can you come over there tomorrow and talk, show them where they're doing it wrong? And so, yeah. So that's, that's the extent of my uh, home building experience. I didn't really build, didn't really do the drawings, but yeah. Well, well you came in just. You're a handy friend to have. <laughs> the all of my houses that I bought were houses that were already built. It, <laughs> how did they take that coming from from you or her? Either either one. Um, they, that I feel like they treated her poorly, but then, but then by the time I came there and kind of, you know, told them like, look, I know what I'm looking at, mm -hmm. they they stopped immediately because they realized they, oh, okay, we're not going to be able to get away with just leaving it like this. <laughs> they probably went home and talked about two bossy women. Huh? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or at least they knew what they were talking about too. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. That's a good skill. I skill set to have too and it's with house house hunting these days yeah cracks in the ceilings and such you can yes. say why that is yes yeah, yeah. Uh, so biggest project hmm. not boom picking stadium <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that I personally have worked on yeah Probably a million, million square foot warehouse. <laughs> oh, okay. So, that, how about most unique then? Yeah, because the, cause the million square foot warehouse is just kind of a big. Uh, the yacht thing was probably. Yeah, the, I, that unique. might be the most. Yeah. In our office in Kansas City, they do um, uh, work with this place called Zainer Sheet Metal that does metal building skins and sell lots of these kind of very interesting um there's a building in seattle and i'm trying to think what the building's called now because it was called the experience music project when it was built but it looks like all this twisted metal and you have to figure out how to support that and i have helped a little bit on those projects and i just find them fascinating mm -hmm. yeah i i but it's it's like a whole different way of thinking because you have to think it completely think in 3d and so, to me, those are the most interesting projects, even though I've just been able to help a little bit on them. <laughs> like the upside down pyramid that's yeah. that somewhere. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Or the glass, the glass apple store. Oh, yeah. Those are, yeah. Those are cool. I would think yeah. they'd have to have a structural engineer. Yeah, right. Wouldn't, yeah. Wouldn't they? yeah. I would think. Yeah. Yeah. Within CSEA, I'm on a committee where we do continuing education and we kept trying to find a glass engineer because it's, you know, there are a lot of places that are doing huge curtain walls of glass. I mean, even at the Tulsa airport, it has huge curtain wall of glass and find somebody to, you know, come and speak on what you need to know about doing that. So it took us a while to actually find who the best expert was on that. So. Is there someone in Tulsa or, I mean, no. in Oklahoma? Oklahoma? No, and, and I don't know, I'm not even remembering. Probably California. I think. Yeah, <laughs> I think it was somebody from New York, actually. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, that's where I'm thinking the apples and big round thing that they're building in California. Yeah, uh, yes, yeah. That would be cool to have worked on, wouldn't it? Yes, absolutely. Well, in some ways, I guess yeah. stressful in others, but yeah. And, and I like those big, huge stadiums that are just kind of amazing. But... Do you have a favorite one? Favorite project? Um, 
my, my favorite projects that our office has done, I will say, because most of my projects, I don't know. I mean, I, I think they're challenging because retail projects are really fast moving and stuff like that. And I like working on them, but they tend to just be, you know, retail projects. <laughs> so. Well, the outlet mall in right close to Yukon on I-40 with the points. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. It's a retail. Yeah, it would be considered yeah. retail, wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah. And we've done that, some but... of those like big, you know, where it was like a whole, a whole development of retail shops, which is interesting. Does Tulsa have a master plan? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, I mean, I know Oklahoma City did for a while. I don't know. If oh yeah, that, the maybe. maps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I think they did a master plan for downtown. Whenever they added the baseball stadium and did the BOK Center, and but I don't know that it extends. It's probably embarrassing. There probably really is one, and I just don't know it. <laughs> were, were those before you came here? Was no, it, was the baseball stadium already here when when this building? No, but you got it was it got built. Oh, after so you yeah, got to see like all that going three on years too. later. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's been a fun fun spot oh, yeah. to be in. Yeah. yeah, we used to kind of have problems with electricity around here because okay. they were always building. Because they redid that warehouse, built that building, redid this warehouse for like two years, and and then same thing that direction and then they built that 10-story building and for years like you know somebody would cut through something and we wouldn't have electricity for a little bit <laughs> just kind of frustrating when you're trying to run a business but yeah. i think that that's past us we haven't had not had electricity in a long time <laughs> <laughs> and you're close by to woody guthrie i saw a sign oh yeah woody, woody guthrie yeah. center yes yeah. so you get some culture yeah, we got to work too. on most of these too which is cool to see you know Things that you worked on, right? Yeah, see them come come alive. Before, yes, before yeah. your eyes. Yeah. Well, what do you do to wind down at the end of, end of the day? <laughs> Watch um, mindless TV shows. <laughs> Ones that don't have any, you know, that you don't have to think about. <laughs> Such as. <laughs> Ooh, I can't. I, I just find something on Netflix and watch oh, silly like things. Yeah. Ted Lasso. Oh, I love Ted Lasso. I like movies. I like TV shows like that that are that are not that are happy. You know, yes. like not. The other day, I took my group to lunch, and that's what somebody said. I need a happy TV show. I've been watching something. I don't know something she's been watching, and you know, there's too many things out there about yes. drama. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, too many happy. I'm with her. We need more happy. Yeah, more happy ones. And that, but that's what we told her. You need to watch Ted Lasso because yeah. he'll make you smile. <laughs> well, at least the first season was was good. I yeah. really liked. Yeah. yeah. And I think it had an OSU connection because he'd say like for Pistol Pete's sake. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And the dance he does at the beginning yeah. had to be the Gundy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Gundy. Well, he was supposed to be um, from a Wich college of Wichita. Wichita. So, Shaw. Shaw. Yeah. yeah. So. Makes sense that it's close. I watch, obviously, I watch Mindless TV too. <laughs> at the end of my day. <laughs> yeah. And I like fun things to make me happy. Things too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, how can you do that in the office? What could you do, do to, to be happy, encourage happiness in the office? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, Morale building, yeah, I guess, is yeah, yeah. something you have to, yeah. to keep in mind. Too. Well, I think stopping and taking breaks and, you know, not just yeah. being all serious all the time is the best way. Going off site to lunch or something. Yes, get, exactly. Get out of the yeah. building. Yeah. That's, that's good, too. Well, I've got covered most of mine, I think. Is there something that we need to ask that I haven't, that I don't know to ask about? I can't think of anything. COVID we've covered. And I've got you had offices in Atlanta, Denver, Kansas City, Nashville. Uh -huh. Nashville is our newest office. Nashville is? Uh-huh. You from Tennessee. Ah, yeah. Cool. My dad's family is all from Tennessee, so I feel like, you know, I came from there or something. <laughs> it's a cool place. Yeah. At least in the I think, yeah, I think Nashville is nice. 
He has yeah. them. They've Excited got about that office. They have tried, or tried to, or last time I was through there, I thought they were making some infrastructure improvements downtown. Oh, yeah. Downtown yeah, um, I haven't been there in a couple of years, but one of the guys from here who went there recently said he's never been in a city that had more cranes up. And so, yeah, oh, I think they are really growing. They've got some money flowing from Seattle. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I did have a quote that your CEO said, Carrie has been the backbone of Wallace for much of her career, mm -hmm. has been involved creating the culture of the company as well as the standards and the workflow. Mm -hmm. I, well, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Probably it's good to get a pat on the back, stuff, isn't it? But that's a nice pat on the back. Yeah. And challenges we've talked about. Yeah. Were you surprised to get into the Hall of the Hall of Fame. Yes, absolutely. I was shocked. <laughs> the dean called me and I was like, really? <laughs> so, do you have any idea how it came to be? Do you know? I, I really don't. don't know. I, I actually think that Tom Wallace nominated me, but I'm not positive. I just, yeah, I think so. Well, they put out a call saying, yes, Tom Wallace is actually in the Hall of Fame, and I think and ever since I got inducted, like I get these things that say, do you have anybody that you recommend? So that's why I think he so probably he, was the one who did. <laughs> so he's a graduate of OSU too? Yes, then? yes, yeah. Also has an architectural engineering degree, so. What, what year, what class, class of? So he graduated, I'm, I'm trying to remember when he first graduated because he went back to get his master's and I know he graduated with his master's in 1981. So, but he in the same was out and worked for like five years and then went back. So he graduated probably in the seventies. Yeah, like probably early seventies and then worked and then went back. He was probably on campus during some of the Vietnam War stuff. Yeah, they had that going yeah. on. Yeah. So you were in the eighties. There probably wasn't much going on that type of turmoil on campus no, at that point, no. disagreements or whatever yeah. in the eighties. No. I mean, that was when the economical downturn in Oklahoma happened, but yes. that didn't have much yeah. impact on the campus, I don't guess. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and I graduated whenever it was a little bit enough past that, but it wasn't as scary. But yeah, I can remember mm -hmm. people two and three years ahead of me that were like, I don't know where we're going to get jobs, you know. So, yeah. Well, it was meant for you to be here for <laughs> and just wind up, didn't it? <laughs> Got lucky. <laughs> so that tells me that you know one person can be instrumental in someone's life course yes. too. Yes, absolutely. If they hadn't recommended you to come yeah. talk to him that Saturday. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A whole different story. Yeah, right. Yeah. Possibly, anyway. Yeah, no, it's interesting how different choices yeah. can totally change how do things you, happen. Do you, do you read much? Yes. Yeah. Like what type of like business work, business type material or fun stuff? I would say about seventy five percent fun stuff, but then I forced myself to read enough okay. business type material to keep right. up. That's okay. <laughs> I kinda like to, you know, like relax and read yeah. novels or yeah. biographies yeah. or and, what? and all different kinds. All kinds. Yeah. Yeah. Are you reading anything interesting now? No, I I, I need to. Yeah, I usually, I haven't flown anywhere in a while. And usually whenever I fly, that's what I do. Yeah. Paper or do you do it on the computer? I do it on the computer. I used to like, oh no, I'm going to be like, I'm going to always want a book. And then I, I don't know, it just became well, convenient to. Well, print isn't completely dead. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I was just curious about that too. Yeah. All right. Then my last question is, uh, how do you want to be remembered? How do you want people to remember Carrie Johnson? Hmm. Wow. I would say somebody who was creative and somebody who uh, particularly in our office like looked out for everybody and you know made sure that that everybody got the same chances. <laughs> I'd say a lot of people would 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 say you've done that then for sure. Yeah. 
Well, I hope so. <laughs> and you've done okay for a, monger, for a girl from a little town of Hollywood, right? <laughs> I shouldn't say little girl with my topic being gender, but that's you, what I mean. You, you've yeah, done, you've no. done well. Yeah, I mean, I, I well, whenever I was growing up in high school, I couldn't have dreamed doing what I'm doing because I didn't know anybody that did, did anything did. like it. So. Yeah, that's interesting, too. I mean, people, a lot of people aren't, don't know. I mean, yeah. I never thought I'd be doing this either. Yeah. You just kind of, sometimes you look up, and sometimes you meander, meander along and, and find, find yeah, the right find spot. The thing. Yeah, yeah so, that's, I mean, to me, that's one thing is, is I think people shouldn't be afraid to change either. I've, I've, even I've worked at the same place for my entire life is that people shouldn't be afraid to, if it's not exactly what you want to do, try something different because... You can work forever. <laughs> that's true. I mean, that's good advice to offer a high school student too. If yes. you don't like like a subject, don't in college, be afraid skip. to. I knew people in college that were, you know, towards the end of, you know, they were in the last semester of college, and they were like, "I'm just not sure if this is what I want to do for the rest of my life." And then just kind of like, "Well, then change." change yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be like in a, a job you don't like. Even if you graduate and say, you know, get out there and do something for three years and don't like it, you know, change. Find a way out. Yeah. yeah. Or find some <laughs> aspect of it. I have, I have a friend that, uh, I mean, it took a lot of schoolwork to do this, but she graduated with a business degree and then went back to school when she was 30 and is a psychiatrist. So, I mean, that's a lot of additional that's college. Good. but. Yeah. She's happy. decided, yeah. I mean, she didn't want to be an accountant anymore, so you know, and she loves what she does now. So, people shouldn't be afraid to just, you know, find what you love. Do you envision yourself changing? No, or do you, 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 <laughs> I like, like what I do. you like what you do? Yeah, so no, no regrets. Yeah, no regrets. Okay, well, thank you for talking with me. Thank this you. Afternoon. It's well, been stop. great.